128 called for. He has released thousands, I say again, thousands of political prisoners and lifted the state of emergency. But he has also reached out to the diaspora community, catalyzed an end to the schism that had plagued the Ethiopian Orthodox Church and initiated an historic peace deal between Ethiopia and Eritrea this past July. Just a few weeks ago, ranking member Karen Bass and I visited, and our staff, the Ethiopian capital of Addis Ababa, where we met with Prime Minister Abe, and a very broad array, array I should say, of individuals and groups, including His Holiness, uh, Abun, Matthias I. One impression I had was a profound feeling of change and optimism, the likes of which I have not seen in Ethiopia ever. For what he has accomplished in less than half a year, Prime Minister, the Prime Minister deserves praise and encouragement. Yet we still must keep in mind that expectations have been raised. Thank you for the invitation to testify today on, national, on U.S. national interests in recent developments in Ethiopia. I also wanted to take the opportunity of this hearing, my first before you, to address Eritrea and the regional significance of the improving relationships between Ethiopia and Eritrea. As a former U.S. Ambassador to Ethiopia, this topic is of great importance to me personally, so it is a real pleasure to be here with you today. Mr. Chairman, Ranking Member Bass, I also want to thank you for your recent trip to Ethiopia. I greatly appreciate the focus the Congress has on this region, which I believe is very important for our national interests, and I welcome the opportunity to discuss recent developments with the subcommittee. Allow me to open our time today with some thematic remarks on recent developments. In Ethiopia, Prime Minister Abiy Ahmed has initiated groundbreaking reforms across most every area of Ethiopian society since becoming Prime Minister on April 2nd, 2018. He deserves tremendous credit for his boldness in tackling issues that previous governments have not addressed. We have a strong relationship with the highest reaches of the new administration, which reflects not only our century-long diplomatic relations with Ethiopia, the only country in sub-Saharan Africa which was never colonized, but also our great support for Dr. Abiy's reform vision. Implementing this reform vision is not without its challenges, and to make such broad and rapid changes will require reinforcing the foundation for the relationship between the Ethiopian people and its government. We have seen Dr. Abi do so, actively engaging with the public to support his government and his works to implement reforms. In July, he came to the United States to meet with the Ethiopian diaspora members, many of whom are enthusiastic participants in our own electoral process and care greatly for their homeland. Dr. Abi has also taken dramatic steps to end the former government's repression of civil liberties, inviting a diversity of voices, including many who were previously criminalized, to participate in Ethiopia's future. Yet, strengthening institutions, setting the economy on a firm footing, and restoring stability to areas facing humanitarian disaster and ethnic conflict will not be done overnight. The expectations of the Ethiopian people are also incredibly high, and many of them are young. We estimate that there are around 70 million Ethiopians younger than 30, many of whom have participated in protests in recent years due to frustration with corruption and the lack of economic opportunity. The Ethiopian government has openly sought partnership with the United States to achieve its ambitious reform plans. We have a tremendous opportunity to support Ethiopia as a friend and partner in the process. We are working to provide support to Dr. Abi and his administration across all of these challenges as he continues his work in years ahead. But looking more broadly at regional issues, we enthusiastically welcome Dr. Abi and Eritrean President Isaias Apawerki working together to end 20 years of conflict between Ethiopia and Eritrea. There is still much work to do to repair the consequences of the conflict for the peoples of both countries, especially in border regions. But we have already seen a tremendous outpouring of emotion on both sides supporting peace, and both governments have highlighted the positive consequences this will bring for the entire Horn of Africa. We support both sides 
as they explore possibilities for peace and continue to encourage and support their long-term success. But guaranteeing the full benefits of peace for years to come will depend on the strength of all parties' efforts to restore friendship and prosperity to both countries. And this must be done as inclusively as possible, including with other important partners in the region and beyond. Since Eritrea's mid-June decision to send a delegation to Ethiopia, there have been several meetings between the two government's officials in Asmara, Addis Ababa, and capitals across the Horn of Africa to discuss trade, development, and tourism. So far, the public and tangible examples of improved relations are the reopening of telephone service and the resumption of regular flights between both countries. And since this was written, they just opened their land borders yesterday at two port points, which was remarkable. Eritrea is also expanding capacity at the port of Masawa for use by Ethiopia, and it was just announced early in September that an Ethiopian commercial vessel used the port of Masawa for the first outbound shipment on an Ethiopian vessel since the peace agreement. We anticipate that these and other steps will create the potential for greater development and people-to-people -people ties on both sides of the border. Peace between Ethiopia and Eritrea leads us to another remarkable story. Eritrea's reemergence onto the regional and global stage and the many potential opportunities for the United States stemming from regional peace. With Ethiopia and Eritrea's conflict ending, we see strong potential for Eritrea